So now we have a breaker between the charge controller and the battery. Okay, so it protects that wiring circuit. Okay, so that's how we charge the batteries. Okay, so the charge controller really is an entire separate circuit and entity than the inverter. The inverter really doesn't have anything to do with the solar modules charging the batteries. It never does. Unless the, unless the charge controller, for some reason, is built into the inverter, and I've only seen that on standalone or on grid tie with battery backup inverters. So that's the charging circuit that we see there, and they just simply use a, a, a gutter box here to help clean up the wiring, right? So that we don't have conduit loops running from all these boxes, right? It might have been able to be done slightly cleaner than it is, but it's not bad. The one thing I I'm not a big fan of on this installation here is that when I look in this box the tops of all these batteries are exposed the terminals of the batteries are exposed to the trip you could drop you could the, short there the batteries very easily if I'm working up here right I could drop my tool right on top of the batteries and potentially have a short this cover okay I'm trying to try not to touch it because it looks a little loose to me um, could actually fall right down onto these battery terminals and we would have a real mess on our hands because there's a lot of battery power in here. And, 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 it would, and it would give us all that power right now. And it would be an arc welder and those batteries would probably blow up and spray acid all over us. Um, so it just wouldn't be a very fun situation. Um, so that would be the one thing I might recommend that they just put a piece of plywood or, or plexiglass or just something to stop tools from, from dropping down on top of those batteries. We can look at the batteries and we can see we've got six volt batteries in here okay and these are these are Trojan T105 golf cart batteries they have about 200 amp hours per battery I think is that right Justine 25. 225 and so we've got eight six volt batteries in here and we've wired them up for 12 volt configuration okay so we're going positive to negative between two batteries for a series connection to build up 12 volts then we're paralleling all of those. So we've got four parallel strings of batteries here. That's really one more than we'd like to see ideally, okay? But it's okay, it'll work that way. It's just a little harder to make sure that all of them are gonna see equal charging and discharging. That's the, that's the reason we try and minimize that. This is a demonstration system, this works just fine. So how you get around that, you have to have batteries that have bigger amp hour capacity each, so you could reduce the parallel strings by one. So we can go to a, a physically amount. bigger yeah. battery, right. which maybe just wasn't, yeah. you know, conducive to, to their working environment and their box and, and really fancy special yeah. charge yeah. controller. This is probably the most high-tech charge controller we can buy right now today. Yeah, this this is this is like state of the art. This is an amazing charge controller. Let's look at it for a minute. We see in 61 volts are coming in from our array. So we've wired three 12 volt modules together, right? Yep. In series. In series. So we're getting 61 volts, and out is coming 13.6. Wait, which, which panel? That's a nominal 12 volt. So the batteries are wired up at 12 volts, but the panels are wired up at a much higher voltage. This charge controller gives us the ability to do voltage step down. So we can wire the array at a higher voltage than we wire the batteries and still charge them and, and this takes care of that. And the advantages to that, we don't see it in this system, this system here, but the advantages are if we wire the array at a higher voltage, let's pretend the array is way across the smaller parking lot, wires. we can run back with a smaller wire because we're pushing less current, right? So that's a huge advantage to us, right? This, that, that's one big advantage of this charge control. So we're, we're, we're bringing in 61 amps and we're charging at 13.6. You're volts. increasing the current. The I'm sorry, volts. volts. Yes. Yeah. So you decrease the voltage at the same rate you increase the current it's by four? Yeah, they're directly proportional. Uh -huh. Right. So that whole panel will be put on 51. No, we're way above the nominal. It's being limited by the charge controller because it doesn't batteries don't need much okay, of a charge, right? So it has the capability to put out much more power right, than yeah. that, but the charge controller is doing its sole function in life, right? Stopping. It's controlling the charge from the array to the batteries. That's its really its sole purpose. If we buy a fancy one like this, it can do a lot of other stuff, 
but really the sole purpose there is to prevent overcharging of our batteries, and it's doing that for us right now. We can see we're getting 0.1 amp in, and it's giving us 0.8 amps out. Okay, this is a maximum power point tracking controller, so we can get some boost out of it as well. And we can see today we've produced 0.1 kilowatt hours, and currently we're getting 12 watts, and we're in float mode. Right, so basically it's telling us the batteries are fully charged and we're just kind of putting a trickle charge on them to keep them totally topped off. When I came over here, when I came up here first thing this morning, we were, we were uh, absorption charging the batteries, okay, and we were charging them up at about 14 and a half volts and I saw about 0.8 amps coming in and about 3 and a half amps going out to the battery. So the batteries, the batteries are basically just at a full state of charge and we don't need much energy from no the array right now. The there's no loads out. on or anything like that. So what's happening to the electrons that are being bounced it, off these silicon? They're trapped. They're basically just trapped in the, in the, in, internally in the modules up there. They're just not going anywhere. They're being limited from, from the charge controller. The charge controller is saying, hey, I, don't, I only need a little, I'm only letting a little, a little small stream of you guys pass through to the battery and the rest of you got to stand in line. So not going that, anywhere. Stuff going on up there. Just, yeah, just and the nice thing is these are these are current limited devices, so they can handle that. We're not right. we're not harming them by not using the electrons that are all excited and wanting to go somewhere. Jeff, just, can, you, can you just review the flow of the electrons? Yeah, just to where we're at right now. Let's do that one more time. So, what we see right here are ground. One's the positive, one's the negative. I'm unsure which is which here. Um, and we're seeing that come in from the array. The positive is being broken over the breaker. Negative's going to a negative bar in here, a common negative bar. Ground's going to a common ground bar. And then we're going out from this breaker to the positive in here. And then we're coming out from the positive battery terminal in here through this breaker. And that protects that wiring circuit. Well, so this breaker protects this wiring circuit between the array and the charge controller. This breaker protects the wiring circuit between the charge controller and the battery. Okay, And so then this wire is actually the one that's coming out going to the battery is attaching onto this bus plate right here. And it's using this cable actually to send its energy down to the batteries. Okay, It's just sharing this cable. Yeah, and then it's a loop. So the electrons are flowing in a loop from A to B, so they're flowing you know, through the positive and then back through the negative, back to home again. The electrons always want to get back home, okay? So they go through the positive and then through the load, the battery, whatever it is, and they come out the negative and back home again. They're always wanting to get back home. So that's why we need the, the positive and negative for a complete circuit, right? So then, then we've got the batteries, two batteries wired in series together. We can see that right here positive to negative, there's a series connection, now we have 12 volts, now we're paralleling all the negatives, paralleling all the positives, and then we've got our home run, negative home run coming in, positive home run, positives connecting to this breaker, the negative's going to a common negative bar in here, and then the positive actually comes out of here, right here, we can see the positive coming out and connecting to the positive terminal on the inverter, the negative is coming out connecting to the negative terminal on the inverter, and then out of the ground bar in here, we've got an equipment ground that comes and equipment grounds this box as well, the inverter. What's the yellow thing? And the yellow actually the, here uh, is for a DC load. Here's the DC plug breaker. Right. So we could plug, this is like a cigarette kind of lighter load, so we could plug in a DC load right into this. Okay, I don't have anything that matches up to that or I Yes, we're ready to swap when you are. And then what we can do is plug this into the inverter and there's an outlet on the outside of this box and we can have AC power. Oh, cool. Yep. Is that what the light is in there? Yeah, the light's going to be AC in there. And, and one other thing to point out, they did put venting in, okay, for the, for the batteries, batteries, which is great. We need venting and we want it to be, um, we want it to be higher than the tops of the batteries. That's great. However, the one thing I think they missed was they didn't put screens on the outside and look what's happening. You are getting mud. Starting, mud to give, uh, wow. starting to get critters in there already, right? So we want to make sure that when we do venting, we put screening on so we don't invite the, the bugs and critters to come in and make a home.